take a look at chaining down a piece of machinery that is under 10,000 pounds. Now, there's not just one way to do this. There are multiple ways it can work. I've learned a bunch over the years and I definitely have my preferences, but don't hold me as there's only one way or just the right way, but I definitely found out what works best for me and what can be the safest way to do this for most people, but it's not gonna be the same for everybody. But there are some very important things you guys need to know, especially when it comes to DOT laws and what's enforced and what's not. We're gonna start by chaining down, or I guess strapping down this brush hog. This brush hog is over five feet long. So according to DOT regulations, it requires two straps then. Most straps will have your weight listed on them. As far as the equipment, once it's on, it's centered where you like it, you can go about starting to secure it. I have a whole nother video on how to, the proper placement for your machine, whether you have a skid loader or an excavator over your axles and weight distribution to make it sure it's the safest way possible. You always want to be as center as possible. I'll leave the link to that video at the end of this one. You want to make sure nothing is loose and can fall off. For example, any of this dirt that is loose should be cleaned off. You don't want it hitting somebody's windshield or bouncing down the road. Especially rocks. Rocks can do a lot of damage. As far as chains and binders, you want to make sure that you're compliant and that they are going to be legal and hold up. There are many places that sell these, such as Tractor Supply, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, the chains and the binders, or Amazon's a really good place. I'll leave a link in the description for a couple different options on Amazon. You can get some good deals on there. But for equipment under 10,000 pounds, 5 16 to 3 8 are a good size chain binder. You can get the larger ones, it's not going to hurt anything, but these are just fine. They're also stamped on the chain itself, what they are. Same thing goes for the actual chains. They've got stampings on them, what size they are, 3 8 and also a weight rating. So I mentioned earlier, the weight of the machine really matters, especially if you're under 10,000 pounds or over 10,000 pounds. This one in particular is around 8,400 pounds, and why that matters is because if it's over 10,000, then the rules change. If it's over 10,000, you have to have a, a separate chain and a separate binder for every corner and for each attachment on the machine, whether it's an arm for an excavator or a bucket for a skid loader or even a blade on a dozer. All that matters if it's over 10,000 pounds. Some of your skid loaders are also gonna be over 10,000 pounds. Once you get into like the bigger ones, like a Cat 289, you're gonna be over 10,000, but like a Cat 279 is gonna be just under that 10,000. So you can get away with doing it a little bit differently, but it's always better to have more chains and binders that are safe than sorry. But that 10,000 pounds is where the, the official DOT rule really kicks in place. Most newer pieces of machinery will have a sticker to designate the exact tie down areas that they recommend the older ones you just have to kind of figure it out but most of the time especially on a skid loader there's a spot in the back near the bottom for your chain and up front it's going to vary sometimes it's on the loader arm or sometimes down in the center especially cat in particular has hooks down in the center an option if you only have one, I guess two chains and two binders, one for the front, one for the back. 
you could slide this chain essentially through that hole. It goes the whole way across there. You sometimes need a dig and bar or rake to get it through, but you can do that the whole way through if you only have one chain. Just feed the whole way through there. You can hook on the other end and have your binder on this end. For the back, you can essentially do that same process if you only have one binder. You always want to try to keep your chains inside the rub rail. So a good option is go down through. Down through and hook it up like that. That way if it ever does happen to come loose, it's not going to come unhooked the whole way. One other thing I probably should point out is you want to always inspect your chains. They can sometimes come apart. These little cotter pins can break off or come loose or come out and this pin can come out essentially. I've caught a couple times that the cotter pin was out and this pin was almost to come out. You also want to look for bent links or broken welds. And you always want to try to get as many twists out of the chain as possible. You don't want it a big knot. You want to have it as straight of a shot as possible. So the goal when you're chaining down a machine is you want to be pulling it down and you want to be pulling it in a direction that's going to counteract the other chain and the other binder. So most common, you want to come at basically at a 45 degree angle from the corner over to the trailer. That's going to be pulling it down and it's also going to be pulling it over and back at the same time. You're hitting all these directions by coming at a 45 degree angle. If you were just chaining it straight across, that would secure it, but it's also going to want to have a little bit of play back and forth. You're going to have a much tighter connection if you're coming at an angle. But you also want to make sure that you're doing the same thing, or essentially the opposite in the front, pulling it the other way. You want to be having the chains pull against each other to make sure that machine is really locked in, nice and tight, nice and secure. With the binder, you want to, these will go in and out. You want to give yourself lots of room when you're starting to ratchet. So you want to try to have it out as far as possible to give yourself some room. Pull your chain tight. Make sure all your slacks out. Simply flip the lever, hold it with one hand, and you can start tightening it down. Many people want to know how to tight to make your chain your binder. You will want to definitely make it tight and secure, but at the same time, you don't want to be overdoing it to whereas you're blowing out seals or breaking welds in your trailer. You should be able to tell from a really good pull, if it's going to come loose or not. And you just take your excess chain, flip it around, like that. That way it can't come off the trailer and drag or get caught in an axle. You want to make sure everything is as secure as possible. So again, if I was doing this with one binder on this end, I would do the same thing. I would hook it here, feed it through that center arm, the whole way through the chain, hook it on the other end, and I'd be pulling it back. The binder would be at a similar, similar angle, so it's pulling the machine this way, counteracting the back end going that way.
This is my preferred method. But it works because I've got four binders and I can still use two chains. But I just simply hook the chain to the trailer the same way, but then I hook the binder up onto the skid letter itself. That way it's as short a distance as possible for just the binder and just a little bit of chain. It's less likely to come loose if you have a shorter distance. Some guys like the crisscross, which works, but at the same time you've got that much more chain to actually work loose. I think it's better if you're having a shorter distance for your chains. For on the front of the build-up cat, very similar process. It's designed that the binder can go in there and the chain can be hooked on the trailer. Here's a good example. These threads are only so long, so if you get them too close to the end, it will come out, but it just simply threads back in. But when you basically have it maxed out, you know that you can have as much slack as you need to get this tightened down. Simply flip the buckle, you can start tightening. These binders work a lot better when they're lubed up. Just take some W40 or some spray, spray in here, this little buckle, and also on the threads, or you could use grease even on the threads. But if they're sitting out a lot in the weather, they're gonna seize up a good bit. It just makes it a lot easier if they're nice and lubed up. Now, I don't get too carried away when I'm cranking down just to start. I always slug them up once I have all four on. That way it's not pulling too much at one time on say the loader arms, for example. The back, it's a little bit different, but the loader arms, you've got a lot of pressure you're putting on the pins and bushings if you're pulling it all at once. So you wanna get it fairly snug, then go over to the other side, snug it up, then go back and forth a little bit to make it more secure. You can potentially throw the cylinder or the chain over this way, but you really gotta watch these cylinders Hitting it with the chain is going to booger them up. You also have some fittings sometimes inside. If it's just loose laying there, it's not a big deal, but when you're throwing it, you just want to watch. Most of the time, I just throw it over the bucket to avoid all that and be safe. Ideally, wherever you position the first chain, you want to try to match it with the, the chain on the opposite side. That way you're pulling at even pressures, making things equal. I would also like to mention that you'll see people sometimes hook a chain or a strap to these handles. And while some of them are a little bit heavier and welded really well, this is not really recommended. Again, there's a definitely a space for the chains and binders. But a problem with Looking up here is, for one, you can break the welds loose easier, but for two, for a chain or a hook, it's going to start cutting in and nicking up this handle. So anytime you grab it with your hand, if you don't have gloves on, you're going to be cutting and nicking your hand. So you always want to make sure that you're using the appropriate chain down locations on the machine. If you have one binder also, it would be nice to be in the center with the chain run up through both sides. But... You're going to be pinching yourself. There's going to be no room to ratchet and bind it in the center. You're going to have a hard time working it, and it's going to be right up against the surface. So it's it's always nice to be out where you've got room to secure the chain, tighten it down more, and work things. We'll make sure it's nice and snug. Then to go down reset, it's very simple. You You flip the block the other way. You can just start ratcheting. So again, just to recap, the chain ideal setup is short, spans with the binder, you're at a 45 degree angle down into the side. That way it's pulling the machine at a nice angle, down, back, into the side, locking into place. 
get all four on, snug them up real good. I also really recommend as you go down the road, a distance, a mile or so, pull over and check them just in case they bounce loose a little bit. It's best, if they're gonna come loose, it's usually within that first distance. You wanna snug them up then. Now you can continue on your journey, but feel free to pull over periodically to check them. But that first distance, once you start bouncing down a gravel driveway or a road, is the best time to check it. So a big question that gets asked a lot is, can ratchet straps be used? And we're, again, we're talking a machine under 10,000 pounds. The answer is yes. If you hook the ratchet strap up in the exact same manner that I showed with the chains and binders, it is legal. To check out these rules for yourself, you can visit the Federal Motor Care Safety Association at the link provided, but it can be kind of complicated. Section 393.128 talks about heavy equipment over 10,000 pounds, but there unfortunately is not just one section that talks about equipment under 10,000. You kind of have to piece different parts together to get the end results. And the end results are as follows. Must be secured, the machine must be secured in front and in back at a minimum. The working load limit of chains and straps must equal at least half the weight of the machine when added together. And the working load limit of the chains and straps is cut in half when hooked to the machine and only to one side of the trailer. It is confusing. It's a lot to process, so feel free to grab a screenshot. Or if you have any more questions, leave a comment in the section below and I will try to answer it best I can. Thanks for watching. This is Chad with Excavation Revelation. Catch you next time.